Welcome to the cockpit of the 2017 Chevy Bolt. This is Chevy's all-electric, battery-powered car, and they've promised a range of over 200 miles. And that's what we're going to find out. We've been given access to a pre-production model of the car, and we've been told to drive from Monterey all the way down the California coast to Santa Barbara. That's a trip of over 200 miles. And in theory, this car can make it on one charge. We're going to find out, and I certainly hope it can, because I've got a flight tonight, and if this thing runs out of juice, I'm probably going to miss it. Now we're driving down Highway 1, which is one of the most beautiful roads in the world. We're driving along the California coast with ocean waves crashing up against the shore and uh, frankly a lot of traffic to worry about too. It's a beautiful road and a lot of people want to see it, so you can't blame them, but uh, unfortunately it does, uh, does diminish the driving fun a little bit. Well, I want to talk about the technology of the Bolt because it's a pretty impressive car and all the things that this can do for a very low cost, starting price of around $35,000 for a car that will hopefully do more than 200 miles on a charge. It has a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack that's situated down in the floor and it flows all the way back beneath the rear seats. That gives again that 200 mile range in theory, but it's actually a reasonably fun car to drive. Okay, it's not a Model S or a Model 3 or even a Model X for that matter when it comes to acceleration, but it is reasonably peppy. We've got a sport mode here you can push on the dash, give you a little bit more acceleration. And then once you do that, it actually accelerates pretty well. Although we're a little bit hampered by some low rolling resistance tires that have about as much grip as a billiard ball. I put your foot down and they actually start to spin, despite the fact that we're not really talking about a whole lot of horsepower here. But the handling overall is quite good. That's helped by the fact that this car weighs about 3,500 pounds. Now for a little car like this, that is a lot of weight, but that's about 1,000 pounds less than the lightest of the Model S's. So this is, for an EV anyway, a reasonably lightweight car. And of course, all that weight is situated down low on the floor, which gives you a low rolling center and ultimately better handling. Sorry, I had to make a little uh, pit stop there, but it's not a road trip without a vanilla milkshake. Cheers. Now again, this is a pre-production car, so everything I said should be taken with a pretty big grain of salt, but I gotta say, even as such, this is a really nice interior. The last time I drove one of these was quite a few months ago at CES. At that point, the entire interior was covered in black plastic, so I couldn't see anything. But this is actually quite nice. We've got light, bright plastics and a lot of glass around, so everything in here is light and eerie. Okay, some of the materials are a little bit cheap feeling, but overall, it's actually reasonably nice looking. And the infotainment system is quite nice too. Now, I'm not allowed to tell you too much about that, unfortunately, but I can say it offers both Android Auto and CarPlay, which is great. There's plenty of room in here too. I'm about six feet tall, but I've got tons of headroom, tons of leg room, even in the back seat. I put my seat exactly where I wanted it and hopped in the back. I had lots of room left over. The seats fold flat and there's a pretty big trunk back there too, meaning if you've got a couple of big dogs like I do, this is probably the EV to think about. Now, in addition to the touchscreen in the middle of the car, I've also got an LCD behind the steering wheel here that gives me lots of information about how the car is doing. Most importantly, the range. I do want to say I'm not driving this car very conservatively. I'm just driving it as I normally would. I'm helped a little bit that I'm in California and it's a very nice moderate temperature, a little over 70 degrees out. That means I don't need the AC. I don't need the heat, and that may have been a conscious decision in choosing the location by Chevy. But ultimately, I've got plenty of range, supposedly, to make it to the end. But there's always that range anxiety that creeps in, and we'll keep an eye on it. As the road has opened up a bit, I've been able to take advantage of the cruise control, which I wasn't able to do when the road was a little bit more twisty. And while the car will warn you when you're getting too close to another car, it won't actually adjust its speed, so it's not really adaptive cruise control. It's just got a little light down here that says you're following too close. That's a bit of a bummer. There is lane keep assist, though, so the car will stay in lane, but it's not really the more sophisticated semi-autonomous kind of thing. It'll basically ping-pong back and forth if you let it do its thing. So it'll help you stay in lane, but it's not the kind of thing that you can really expect the car to drive itself in traffic or anything like that. You definitely still need to keep your hands on the wheel. We have crossed 212 miles. According to Google Maps, I have 30 miles left to go. And according to the Bolt, I have 39 miles of range remaining. Now, I think that should be okay, but there's a rather imposing looking mountain range between myself and the airport that I need to get to in order to catch my flight home. So I'm a little bit concerned, but yet I am confident enough, so confident in fact, 
that I've turned the air conditioning back on because it is getting a little bit warm in here. But uh, let's see how we do. Keep your fingers crossed. All right, we're almost over the mountain. I've got 14 miles left, and I just got my first warning that the battery's about to die. I'm down to 20 miles of indicated range, or a minimum of 16 miles, but I'm definitely not driving too aggressively at this point. I still think we're okay, but um, when you start seeing warning messages flash up on the dashboard, that can spike the blood pressure a little bit. I just got a second warning that says propulsion power is reduced. Battery range is now not showing anything. It just says low but i've got only 12 miles left and uh, we're over the top it's all downhill from here i think we'll be all right i think we're gonna be okay hey good news all this descending's actually giving me more range i'm now up to 15 miles left and i've got all my propulsion power back how about that well here it is we made it 240.4 miles covered 17 miles of range left that's that's really impressive. Frankly, I don't even know what to do to complain about this car. I've been really impressed with just about everything thus far. I didn't even have to drive it carefully. We got here with plenty of range left. Okay, I turned off the air conditioning for a little while, but that was just me being paranoid. Turns out, no problem at all. All on one charge. That's a long way to go in what is a very practical, very affordable car. Okay, it's maybe not as sexy as Tesla's upcoming Model 3, but it is certainly more practical. And I'll guarantee you can buy one of these a lot earlier than that Model 3. Really, really impressive.